Many PhD scholar in India used to complain that they are not well paid during their PhD tenure because when you join PhD as a junior research fellow, you will be getting around 31,000 per month and after 3 years you will be promoted to senior research fellow. Then you will be getting around 35,000 per month for the last couple of years of your PhD. And this money is much less compared to the stipend that people used to get in abroad like USA and UK. And this is one of the major issues for which students prefer to go to abroad for their PhD like they prefer to go to countries like USA or countries in Europe rather than doing PhD from India because money is a factor when you are going for a PhD life because when you will be enrolling yourself for the PhD you will be a bit older and you will have some family responsibilities and there are some other social pressure will be there so that's why financial stability is very much needed when you are going for the PhD and that's why you know having a good amount of stipend will be always helpful and will be always required uh, if you are going for a long term commitment like PhD and hence as in India the average stipend is a bit lower than the foreign countries so that's why people used to hesitate doing PhD or research from India and they used to prefer to go to abroad like countries like USA and Europe so to control this brain drainage and and to you know motivate or attract more people to do research from India government of India have taken a special initiative so there is this special fellowship that you can get that is a prime minister research fellowship or PMRF through which you can earn up to 80,000 per month during your PhD tenure or uh, doing research from India so you, what, what is needed is that you have to do your research from any of the premier institutions uh, in, in a country like IITs and IISC and you can apply for this special fellowship through which you can earn up to 80,000 per month and I was fortunate enough that recently I have received this prestigious fellowship as a research scholar from IIT Kharagpur and that's why I have decided that I'll be sharing all the information in this particular video and will be sharing my personal experience as well so that it will be helpful for all the future aspirants they will get all the information related to PMRF or Prime Minister Research Fellowship in this particular video and hopefully it will motivate them to come and do research from India so this video will be a bit lengthy uh, because I will be giving all the details related to PMRF here like what are the eligibility criteria, what are the institutions who is eligible for you know getting this grant, how to apply for PMRF, what is the selection procedure and all. Everything I am going to uh, discuss in this particular video so it will be a bit lengthy but if you want to know everything about PMRF please do watch the video till end and before starting the video if you haven't subscribed my channel yet please subscribe it and hit the bell icon so that you get all the notification. Now without further ado let's get started with today's video. Now the first question that will come into your mind is that will I be eligible for PMRF if I do my PhD from anywhere in India and the answer is no you are not eligible for PMRF if we do your PhD from any institutions in India there are some specific institutions that is listed in the PMRF website so if you only do your PhD from those institutions then only you are eligible for PMRF grant or PMRF fellowship and these institutions are IISC all the IITs all the IJARs that is Indian Institute of Science and Educational Research and finally some central universities or NITs offering science or technology degree which appears in the list of top 25 institutions in the NIRF ranking overall in the previous year. So each year government uh, is to you know release this NIRF ranking. So if your institution is offering science or technology uh, degree and if it comes under top 25 institution in this particular ranking then only you are eligible for PMRF um, grant or PMRF fellowship and this year when I was applying so in this last category there are there are some five to six institutions like JNU, BHU, University of Hyderabad, Aligarh Muslim University, Jamia Milla Islamia University, University of Delhi and finally NIT Trichy or Trichurapalli and these are called PMRF granting institutions. Now coming to the eligibility criteria. So you can apply for PMRF in two ways. One is through direct channel and the second one is through lateral channel. Direct channel means that if you are you know just admitting for, for PhD in a particular institution then through direct channel you can apply for, for, for PMRF and there are some eligibility criteria that I am coming next. 
and the lateral entry is that if suppose you have done your PhD for some time in a particular institution and then you are deciding that you will be applying for PMRF then it will be through lateral entry channel now what are the eligibility criteria for applying to PMRF uh, PMRF fellowship now I will be I'll be explaining you uh, from the from the particular document that I have so I'll be showing you that document and through that I will be explaining you what are the uh, eligibility criteria is uh, there for each of these different channels. So what is the eligibility criteria for direct entry channel uh, applicants? So the applicant should have satisfied one of the following criteria. So first of all, you should have completed or will be pursuing the final year of four or five year of your undergraduate or five year of integrated MTech or two years of MSc or a five year undergraduate postgraduate dual degree program so all of this degree uh, program if you are if you, if you have if you have already completed or pursuing in science and technology stream from iisc iits nits isers iiest or any central funded uh, iits and if you have a minimum cgpa uh, C, or cpi of uh, 8 point out of 10 point scale at least 8 point out of uh, 10 point scale then you are eligible for applying for the pmrf uh, fellowship or uh, suppose you have completed or pursuing all of these degrees from any other institutions or university recognized in India and if you have a minimum CGP of 8 or, or, or equivalent also you know if you have a if you have a, a minimum gate score of 650 in the respective gate subject if you have any one of these things then also you are you are you know eligible for applying for the P, uh, pmrf as a direct candidate and the third third uh, category is suppose you have qualified gate and if you are pursuing or completed your mtech or ms by research in one of the pmrf granting institutions that i have just mentioned before and we have a you have a minimum cgpa of 8 point out of 10 scale at the end of first semester with a minimum uh, of four courses so what you have to do is in your mtech you have to take four courses in the first semester and you have to secure eight out of 10 as a cgpa then you are eligible for applying applying for the pmrf as a direct entry scheme so if you just satisfy one of these following three uh, one of these following three criteria and you have applied for a phd program in one of the pmrf granting institutions and get selected for that then you are eligible for applying uh, for the direct entry channel uh, pmrf pmrf fellowship now next one is uh, the lateral entry channel uh, as i said that once you are you have, you have already got, got admission into phd and if you are uh, doing your phd and then you want to apply for pmrf then you have to go to lateral entry channel so the candidate uh, has to be pursuing pmrf in one of the pmrf granting, granting institution that is a fresh criteria further he or she uh, should have completed at most 12 months in the phd program if he's, he or she joined the program as a master degree or maybe at most 24 months you have completed in your PhD program if you have joined PhD after a B.Tech degree then you are eligible for applying lateral entry so if you are joining as a PhD candidate after M.Tech degree you have to spend at most 12 months uh, in the in the PhD and within that you have to apply for the lateral entry channel and if you are someone who are directly you know joining PhD then at most within 24 months you have to apply for the lateral entry channel and the second criteria is that you you have to have a you have to complete at least four courses in the phd and your cgp has to be 8.5 or more uh, in 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 the phd so these are the these are the criteria uh, if you if you if you the candidate must satisfy these are the these are the conditions then you can apply for the lateral entry channel uh, pmrf fellowship so this is the this is the cases for both the cases this is the requirements of both the cases and this is the eligibility criteria for both the cases that is the direct entry case or the lateral entry case now coming to the actual selection procedure so selection happened typically in two cycle in a year that is in july cycle or december cycle that means when typically you will be you will be admitting uh, for the phd this is the two cycle that is there in india through which the different institution is to you know admit students so that is this is the two cycle you can apply for the pmrf fellowship now coming to the actual selection procedure so what you have to do is you have to send your cv and all the details like your roll number registration number your guide name and all you have to send it to your department office of your institution now office will nominate you uh, based on your cv and the academic record that you have and they will upload all the nominations to the central portal of pmrf so in pmrf there is a central portal where all the departments of all the institution has to upload their nomination there now after your institution will nominate you and upload your details into the into the portal then within two to three weeks you will receive a mail from that central portal in your institution mail id where a login credential will be given to you 
through that login credential you can log in to that particular central portal and then you have to upload all your details you have to give all your details like all your academic details and personal details and you have to upload all the necessary documents now coming to what are the documents that you have to submit so first of all you have to submit your cv so please make a proper cv explaining all the details of your academic background if you have any industry experience before this please mention that what are the projects you have worked in the industry that also you have to mention and if you have a research experience also like if you have worked in some research lab and all then what are the publications you have what are the projects you have worked on so everything detailed about it but in a in a in a crisp way you have to make a cv so the cv length may be around uh, around maximum two page you can make but all the detailed information should be there in the cv because cv is kind of a very crucial thing in this kind of scenario where there are a lot of competition so based on your CV you might get an edge of getting selected. Next is you have to submit all your mark sheets of your BTEC, MTEC and if you are a lateral entry candidate you have to submit a mark sheet of your PhD also. Now next is for direct entry candidate you have to make a SOP that is statement of purpose. Now in this SOP you have to mention what are the problem statements or what are the research problem you are interested to work and what, you, what is your tentative plan to do work in the next uh, 3 to 4 years that you have to mention in this particular document and also you have to mention that why you are applying for uh, PMRF fellowship that why why it is ne needed for you in your research career that also you have to mention in in detail in this particular statement of purpose uh, purpose or SOP SOP letter so this is a very crucial thing for 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 the direct entry candidate because uh, you are you are entering into the PhD PhD research so that's so you have to you have to uh, you know clarify it that what is the prior motivation for doing the PhD research and why you need this particular grant like PMRF fellowship or PMRF grant that you have to mention in this particular document so you have your main focus would be to you know writing this SO, SOP letter and also you know if your guide is selected we can consult it with your guide and uh, prepare a well uh, SOP letter because this is very important for the direct uh, direct entry candidate now for the lateral entry candidate the research proposal letter is the most important thing because as a lateral entry candidate you know you, you have already worked for some time like one year or one and a half year or two years you have already worked so that's why you know your, whatever work you have done so far that detail should be there in the research proposal document and what you are looking uh, for in the next coming 2-3 uh, years what are the work you are planning to do in the next coming 2-3 years that also has to be mentioned in this particular uh, particular research proposal uh, document so that's why they are they, 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 they are uh, all, always recommending that you have to make a crisp uh, research proposal summarizing all your work that has been done and what are the work you are planning to do in the near future so this document is, is really a very crucial document for the lateral entry candidate so that's why I will always suggest you that you consult with your supervisor and discuss with him and make a proper research proposal document so that you know it will it will give you a proper age while selecting for the uh, PMRF fellowship next document is the details of the all the publications that you have if you are a direct entry candidate if you have a publication that is good for you but it's not always uh, you know kind of mandatory that you will have a publication when you are you know just entering uh, when you're getting the admission for PhD but still if you have a good publication by then like if you have a publication in your B take or M take then you can you can give the detail of the publication in the in the in the portal but and for the lateral entry it is very important because you have already worked for some time in the PhD so that's why you should have some some paper by then and that will be helpful so if you have some paper give the detail of the paper like what is the heading what what is the abstract of the paper everything you can you can provide in that portal and it will be really helpful finally the letter of recommendation or LOR uh, so you have to give the detail of two person I mean I mean two professors who will be recommending you for this particular fellowship so once you submit your application within one week uh, those two person will receive a mail and they will they will submit their uh, recommendation letter directly to the portal so just verify uh, after one week of your uh, submission of the application to those two people whether they have received a, a mail from the central uh, central portal or not just verify it if they didn't receive any mail then you have to uh, consult with the support team of the uh, central portal and fix the issue but generally it's not an issue most of the cases this two person is to receive a mail from the central portal and they will upload their uh, LOR or letter of recommendation directly to the that particular portal but please remember this is really very crucial letter of recommendation because uh, that is something uh, you know that 
that that uh, how much strong recommendation letter you are getting from any of the very renowned professor or not that makes a lot of difference so that's why you should have a very good rapport with your guide or supervisor so that they will give you a very strong recommendation and uh, it will it is really really very crucial uh, to get this kind of uh, prestigious scholarship where uh, the competition is too high now once your application is done and your uh, supervisor or whoever is your recommender has given you a letter of recommendation now there will be a central panel of experts from each domain will sit and they will scrutinize your application and all the details that you provided like your cv your publication record your letter of recommendation your sop or research proposal everything they will scrutinize and then they will decide who is eligible for the pmr scholar for that particular cycle now here comes a particular question that based on what matrix they is to choose a particular candidate and then they should reject another candidate frankly speaking i don't know uh, the procedure but in their portal they have mentioned something which i will be stating you now for direct candidate what they have mentioned is the matrix on which the candidates will be judged will include the research proposal of the person particular candidate number of publications that he or she has in different uh, journal or conferences performance of that particular candidate in different international competitions like olympiad or different programming contest grade uh, your grade in 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 btech and mtech and a strong recommendation letter and for lateral candidate and the matrix are a strong research proposal that is needed as i have said that a letter of research proposal that you have to submit your publication record number of publication that you have by then because you are a lateral candidate so you are you are you have already done some work in your in your phd life so number of publication record that is needed and your grades and they have mentioned due weight should be given to the publication in different reputed journal and conferences so if you have a very good journal and conference in your phd then you have a good chance uh, to get uh, get this particular pmr fellowship now coming to how much money you will get as a stipend from this particular fellowship so as you all know phd is is a tenure of around 5 years so it is average you can you, it will take around 5 years to complete your phd so in this particular fellowship you will be getting money for the 5 years only so in the first couple of years you will be getting around 70000 per month as a stipend money in the third year you will be getting around 75000 per month and the last two years you will be getting 80000 per month and i hope you by now you have under, uh, you have uh, identified or understood the difference between a normal jrf fellow and a PMR PMR fellow because the difference of uh, the stipend money that you will be getting uh, as a JRF fellow is like around thirty one thousand per month and a SRF fellow is like thirty five thousand per month but here you will be getting around seventy five thousand on average uh, per month throughout that five years so it is a huge achievement monetarily because uh, you know you you will be getting uh, getting almost a job kind of salary in India so this will give you a financial stability that will be helpful for you to you know uh, carry all the budget, uh, baggages and responsibility of your family and at the same time if you have that kind of financial stability you can focus more on the research research work because you know you are getting paid enough so that's why you will be you will be giving more to the research work that your 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 country uh, you know demand from you so that's why i think personally this particular fellowship is really helpful for those who are serious about about doing research from india and who need money to you know back up their family yeah so that's it that's it about today's video i hope i have give, given you uh, all the details related to this particular fellowship pmrf fellowship and i hope it will be helpful for all the aspirants in future and it will motivate you all to come and do you know research from india so if you have a really good academic background if you have some good publication then your chance of getting this particular fellowship is really good it's not that easy but it's not that tough also if you have a very good academic and research background then you will you will definitely get this particular particular fellowship award so that's it about today's video guys i mean if you have any particular doubt about this particular fellowship which i might have missed please let me know by commenting in the in the comment section and share this video to many other people so that you know they also get to know about this particular fellowship because this is this is very necessary that people know this about this particular fellowship so that you know they decide to stay in india and do research from india so it will be helpful for our country so that's why you know sharing this particular video is really really helpful so that people get to know about it and if you like that video please hit the like button so that this video get more reach yeah that's it about today's video please do subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get the notification whenever i will upload my next video so that's it guys that's it about today's video i'll be meeting in the next video until then bye